Hey guys, welcome back to our segment routing traffic engineering series. In the last episode, we went ahead and talked about SRPCE, which is the path computation element. And we kind of talked about a different type, the way we can go ahead and calculate or a node or a head end can go ahead and calculate a path from a given head end to a given tail end or the end point. We can have the head end doing that calculation, and that means a local path computation. Or we can have a dedicated element into our network topology that is doing the path computation, or basically the head end is delegating that computation to another element, and that was the SRPC. This is going to be a very uh, small episode. We'll primarily go ahead and do the configuration of SRPCE and we'll go ahead and talk about the things that you need to do on PCC. But that will not be it. As we progress further in the series, we will go ahead and explore. We will be keep on exploring more and more details about SRPCE. So as you can see in our topology, we do have a router which I have named as SRPC. If you see this SRPC router has two connections. One it's connected to the P4 router and another link it is connected to the P1 router. So in this particular topology, SRPCE is learning about the topology using these links and SRPCE is also participating into our IGP computation or into the IGP topology. So right now, SRPCE is building its LSP database using the IGP information. Remember we had talked about that we can feed either IGP data or we can feed the BGP LS to SRPCE for the whole topological information. In this topology, we are using IGP. Later as we progress, I will show you the BGP LS also. How do we configure the BGP LS and how the SRPC consumes. But in terms of functionality, there is no difference when it comes to SRPC either using BGP LS or the IGP. But there are few things again that we need to keep in mind and we had talked about we can have SRPC in the HA mode that means as a redundancy. In this particular topology we only have one SRPC again you know as we progress I will bring up another SRPC to this particular topology. But there is one thing that I want to highlight right now when you have an SRPC there are couple type of redundancy models that comes into a picture. We can have a redundancy which is centric to PCC, that means head end, which is called PCC centric redundancy mode. And the second type of mode of redundancy is called PCE centric redundancy mode. Usually, the recommended redundancy mode for SRPCE is PCC centric. That means we want to configure the redundancy mode to be PCC centric. And why? I will go ahead and explore that more into the next episode. But so far, just remember that there are two types of mode on the SRPC that we talked about. One is called PCC centric and PCC is nothing but again head end. And the second type of mode is PCE centric. And the recommended that Cisco recommends the mod for SRPCE is the PCC centric model. That's what you need to keep in mind. In case of NHA, remember we had one primary PCE and then we'll have the second which is called your secondary PCE or the backup PC. So primary PC is the one which is doing the all path computation request, getting the reports, doing all that kind of an update and the backup PC is only doing the path computation report. So that way in case the primary PC goes down, it is up to date with all those reports and it can go ahead and take over that particular role. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and log into our SRPC and see what is the configuration that I have done on the SRPC. So if you take a look at, I have already logged into our SRPC. So in terms of the segment routing, show run segment routing, the only thing that we need on the SRPC, we are saying, okay, hey, segment routing, there is a global block, that's all, because we have SR running across all the nodes. And on this SRPC, we have a loopback interface which we have configured 192.168.0.9. And there are two interfaces, GIG0 and GIG1, as we talked about, because this SRPC connects to our router P4 as well as router P1. That's what these two interfaces are. And if I quickly go ahead and show you the ISIS configure on this one, so I'm doing show router running ISIS. And as you can see, both of these interfaces, GIG0 as well as GIG1, are participating into our IGP 
and because they are participating into the IGP, they are getting all the IGP information and that is how that IGP information is being fed to the SR to build that SRT database and that SRT database is being consumed right now by the SRPC to all the path computation within this particular topology. Now, that means I can go ahead and offload the path computation from PCC to PCE. Now, remember between the PCE and PCC, there has to be a connection. And when we do that connection, that is called PC, that connection happens over the PCEP protocol or is simply called PCEP connection, PCEP connection. So now let's go ahead and see what is the configuration that we need to do on SRPCE. And if you recall, show uh, PCE. So if you see on this particular router, I went into the config mode and I ran the command PCE. Now we are in the PCE configuration mode. In the PCE configuration mode, the only configuration that we need to really do is say, okay, hey, what is the address of my PCE that is listening for all the requests? By default, SRPCE listens for, let me go ahead and show you again, show IP, show IP interface, sorry, show IP interface brief. Now, on this router, we have a management as well as local. So, by default, as I said, SRPC also listens for any PCEP connection on the management interface as well as the IP address that we are specifying. So, in this case, we are saying, okay, hey, my PCE is reachable on the loopback address of this particular router, which is 192.168.0.9. And because this node is participating into the IGP, all of the node has a reachability to 192.168.0.9. So for PCE, the only two line of configuration that is needed, PCE and address IPv4, what is the address of my PCE node basically. We'll talk about this rest right now. This I have configured this rest so I can talk to my SRPC via a rest conf client, also a rest client uh, like Postman or you can use go ahead and curl. So this is the only configuration that we need to turn on the SRPCE for a router to be configured a PCE router primarily. Now once the PCE is configured, now we need to go ahead and configure our nodes. So they can go ahead and communicate over a PCEP connection or a PCEP protocol to our SRPCE. And when they request, they now they can go ahead and send any request and you know ask for any path computation. So now let's go ahead and log into our router PE1 and we will go ahead and do configuration or see the configuration which is I've already done. So PE1 happens to be our one of the head end router or is also called PCC. So on the PCC or on this header router, we are saying segment routing. This is all standard configuration. But now within the segment routing traffic engineering, we went ahead and configured PCC. Hey, I am configuring this router as a PCC. So on this, let me go ahead and show you the IP interface brief. And inside the PCC, I am saying source address. So I'm telling, hey, what is my IP address that I will use to form a PCEP connection? And in that case, I'm using 192.168.0.5, which happens to be my loopback address. As you can see, 192.168.0.5. So I'm saying, okay, inside the PCC configuration mode, I'm saying source address is my loopback address. And then I'm telling, hey, PCE, what is the address of the PCE? So we are saying PCE address and the IPv4. The IP address of our PCE is 192.168.0.9 which happens to be the loopback IP address of our SRPC. And then with the SRPC, we are saying a precedence of 100. Again, that way, uh, if you have a redundant SRPC, we can go ahead and configure a different precedence there. After that, you would see that I have written two more line here. One, it says report all, and another says redundancy PCC centric. And I just talked about the recommended mode for SRPC redundancy is PCC centric. That is the reason I'm saying, hey, the redundancy mode that I am doing is PCC centric. And as I said, in the next episode, I'll go ahead and talk about these different redundancy mode. Also, we will go ahead and explore what is the use of this report also. For the time being, the only configuration that we need on our head end is PCC under segment routing, traffic engineering. We are saying PCC. What is my address? So that means we are indicating by source address IPv4. 
that happens to be my loopback address and then we are talking here what is the address of my PCE server so we are saying PCE address and the IP address of your PCE server on that we can go ahead and reach the PCE server and then we'll go ahead and configure a precedence of 100. Right now we also went ahead and configured a redundancy the redundancy happens to be PCC centric. Now once the PCC mod and all is configured so we went ahead and configured the PCC side of configuration. Now to see if do we have a PSAP connection between the PCC that means PE1 which happens to be our head end router and the SRPC. So we can go ahead and run a couple commands here. So I can go ahead and say hey show segment routing traffic engineering PCC and after PCC there are a couple information that we can take a look. We can go ahead and explore IPv4 address family related information or we can go ahead and take a look at LSP related information. So in this case we are interested with the IPv4 and with the IPv4 it says okay hey, peer information so I'll do a peer followed by a question mark and then we can go ahead and look at brief detail or internal. Let me just go ahead and simply press and enter here. So in this case we are looking at the PCC's peer database and the peer address if you see this peer address is nothing but the address of our PCE 192.168.0.9. And it talks about the precedence and it says, okay, hey, this is the best PCE available as of the moment. If you had multiple, it will pick one of the SRPCE as the primary that becomes your best and second one will be your backup. And it says right now the state between the PCC and PCE, the PSAP connection or PSAP protocol connection is up. That's why you see the state being up. And this line is pretty interesting where it says capabilities. It is stateful. We have talked about the SRPCE stateful. And it can go ahead and also do what? An update. It can go ahead and do segment routing. And it can go ahead and instantiate the policy. That means SRPC can also go ahead and send the policy down towards the PCC. We don't have to configure policy manually on the head end router or your PCC anymore. Now, similarly, if I go ahead on the same command, now with the peer, we can go ahead and like do a detail. So it will go ahead and give you a little bit more information. Uh, similar information, okay, PSAP has been up for how long, the local keep alive and some of the other information that you can go ahead and explore here. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the LSP information also. So PCC, LSP, with the LSP again we have quite a few information. So just let's go. So right now there is no LSP because we do not have any kind of SR policy. And again we can go ahead and do the LSP detail if you are interested just to see again. Once we'll have a policy on this head end or PCC, you would be able to see the LSP detail. So now let's come back to SRPCE and see we can take a look at some of that this information. So we know that 0 0.5 is one of our head end or PC. So I can come back to here. I can run the same command show PCE. This also has quite a few information. And if I let me go ahead and say IPv4 with the IPv4 we can say hey peer that we are interested in and I'll just simply go ahead and press enter. So as you can see okay hey this SR now we are looking at the PCE peer database. It says okay I am peer with all of these guys and we just went ahead and looked on PE1 which happens to be P1 and as you can see we have a PSAP connection between this SR PCE and the PE1 and apparently this SR PCE has a PSAP connection with pretty much all the routers in our topology. Now we can go ahead and again do a detail if you're interested to look at a little bit, you know, some of the things in more detail. Now one of the pretty important command with the SRPC, you can go ahead and say show IP PCE, IPv4 and followed by there are few quite a few command and look at the last option that says topology. Topology gathered by PC. So this is a command to see the whole topology that your SRPC knows. So we can go ahead and the topology. And with that, there are again few options. I'm just going to run the default option for the timing. And now we are looking into the PC's topology database in the detail. And it shows you the whole topological view that SRPC sees. And this is the database that SRPC uses to do any kind of a path computation from a given head end again to a given endpoint. And now it says, okay, hey, there is a node one and that is the T router ID that happens to be myself. So I am calling myself as a node one in this particular case. And then you can take a look at different ISI system, SRGB, different links that are connected with this uh, node. So now if you go ahead and scroll further down, let's take a look at it. one of the node. 
So I'm just going to go ahead and scroll and just keep the node 1 into our picture somehow. So if you take a look at in this case, it's a node 1, T router ID 1968 0.4. So in this case, is the P4 router that is being assigned a node ID of 2. That's the host name. You can see the P4, ISIS, and you would see some prefix information, sRGB information. And then you would see the link information. It says the link address, one of the link is this. And it's connected to the another router, which has this particular link address. This is the ISIS. What is the level of ISIS that is operating? And it talks about, okay, hey, this guy is connected to a node, which is a P1. So in this case, the P4 is connected to this particular P1. So it is talking about this particular link. And it gives you the similar information, the ISIS ID. You would see the metric also here. It says in this case, the IGP metric is 1. The TE metric is 1. And latency is 1 microsecond. You would also go ahead and see the bandwidth which is available on this link as well as how much is reservable bandwidth on this one. And again, if you go ahead and scroll some of the things, a few detail, you will get to see the same detail for all of your node. So this is the, so this command is very useful command, show PC IPv4 topology. That's the quickest way to look at inside the PC's topology database. And this is the database that PC uses to do any path computation from a head end to a particular endpoint again. And again, you can go ahead and explore some of these things command in detail. Like I can go ahead and say, okay, hey, just give me a summary. I am not interested in looking at everything. So in the summary it says, okay, hey, in this, I do see there are nine nodes in this whole thing. There are nine prefixes that I'm looking here. And there are total 32 links that it sees. And it talks about different type of adjacency SIDs. It says 32. Uh, lookup nodes 10, then it talks about some of the BGP information and some of the other things. Update states from IGP and or BGP, nodes added 24, node deleted how many times, links were added, links were deleted, PSEP allowed, yes, last HA and some of the other information. So this is very important command that you can go ahead and run and take a look at some of the other information. With the IPv4, we have few more command and one of the another command that we will see here is called path command path computed by PC. That means before you really go ahead and ask a head end or PCC to do a path computation, you can come to SRPC directly and see does SRPC sees a path between a given head end and a given end point or tail end. And we can go ahead and do that quickly by running this command. So I'll say show PC IPv4 path. Hey, I am looking for a path source. The so source happens to be the head end that I'm interested into. So I want to find out if SRPC is able to calculate a path from this head end. So the head end in this case is 192.168.0.5 question mark. And then it says destination. Destination happens to be our tailor and endpoint. Let's say in this case, we want to see, do we, can you help me calculate a path from PE1, let's say to PE2. So which happens to be 192.168.0.6. 192.168.0.6 question mark and that's all pretty much so let's go ahead and press enter and it says okay hey SRPC is giving you a path that means SR if you go ahead and configure a policy on PE1 and you delegate the path computation to SRPC for the endpoint PE2 you will be presented with this particular path so it says okay hey you would take this as the first hop this will be your second hop so this is a pretty quick way to verify whether your SRPC is able to compute a path from a given head end to a given tail end. So now that means I, if I go ahead and configure a policy on P1, it will be valid, it will be able to resolve, and you know it will be able to go ahead and reach that particular endpoint. And again, there are a few more commands that you can go ahead and explore by using the show PCE. Again, we can go ahead and look at all the LSP information if we are interested into by doing the show PC LSP and if you go ahead and run it right now we do not have any policies in this topology at the moment that is the reason you do not see any kind of LSP information and you can go ahead and explore some of the things how do you really go ahead and configure SRPC what do you need to configure on a PCC and then how would you bring up a PSAP connection between your SRPC and your PCC so that will be all for this episode in the next episode, we'll go ahead and talk about the, you know, some of the SRPC redundancy model. We'll go ahead and explore a few more hands-on command. And then we will go ahead and start doing the policies with the help of SRPC. So that'll be all for this episode. I will see you guys in the next episode. Thank you.